All right, Soups and Lolo, episode 10. This show gets better every week. Yeah. I have to say the negative about this is it's episode 10, and we only have like six more left. Right. Um, I have to say the negative about this is that this was on the CW <laughs> and isn't a movie. <laughs> Like the, the special effects on this show have always been pretty good. They were good. They were good this week. Yeah, this week there were a couple shots though that were just like not necessarily action, but just there's a shot of and then again, well, there's a shot of Morgan Edge towards the end. Yeah, and I have to talk about this one. It reminds me of Man of Steel when he comes out in his suit for the first mm-hmm. time, and then the sun is on him, and he just kind of looks up. Yeah. And has his eyes closed. And there's a very similar shot in See, this episode. What's funny that. is like when I walk outside and it's sunny, I make that same like yeah. motion. Yeah. I don't have any superpowers to like energize. That you know of yet. But like, dude, I'm 43. If I had superpowers, <laughs> I'd know by now. I'm not Bruce Willis and and Unbreakable. Um, I'd know by now. Um, but like just that feeling of the sun on your face, you just kind of like your your mouth like just kind of like goes up in a smiling fashion towards it, like you're a fish hook, fish on a hook. Um so I, I have to say I, I did come into this week's episode a little apprehensive because I was terrified that Edge was going to reveal himself to be Zod. And if he was Zod, I cannot guarantee that I was going to rage quit the show. You wouldn't have. But I can't guarantee that I wouldn't have. <laughs> so. I, I think it might have marred a little bit of the goodwill that this show has built up for you. For me, I would have been disappointed just because, again, we we talked about this before. Um, Zod on Smallville was great. Callum Blue was great. He was great. He was a great. He's the most underrated Zod. Yeah. But but again, one of the things we like is different stuff. Yes. And I like the idea of Morgan Edge. And again, when we heard the brother thing, we're like. Does he mean just Kryptonian brother? Like, hey, my brother, my Kryptonian brother. Okay, so let, let's let's because it's it just picked it starts up. off. It picked right. right up. Like this was great. Like they didn't make you wait for anything. Um, so Edge reveals, reveals himself to be Tal Ro, who is the son of Zeta Ro, and then Tal, let's just call him Tal mm-hmm. Morgan Edge, reveals that his mother is Laura Van L, who is also Clark's mother, Cal El's brother, a mm-hmm. mother. Um, and so he's significantly older. And the beauty of this is it explained it that Laura Van L was married to she was Laura Van Roe. Mm-hmm. And when she was married to Zeta, um, they did not uh, see eye to eye, <laughs> but they were matched. So they had to have a child. And it was the Kryptonian way where it was like, you know, this kind of new mythos where the the children are all artificially like in insem- all artificial like insemination grown in a kryptonian test tube sort of a thing um but then she fell in love with jor-el and went off and did what she did um i thought that was great i i thought it was also interesting that she sent tal to earth um apparently without really thinking where he was going to land because he landed in england and this felt very much like um, the Flashpoint version of Superman, mm-hmm. where he didn't land in Kansas. He landed in the Metropolis. They captured him immediately. They tested him. They kept him away from the sun because they knew that's how he was powered. It felt very much like that. So it was kind of cool. Um, and and he was experimented on and everything. And then, you know, he had the Eradicator. And when he, could, when he finally escaped, that was a great little flashback. That was... It was really, really cool. It also made me really, really happy to have Adam Rayner as Morgan Edge and not um, Peter Petrelli's older brother. Uh-huh. Uh, Peter Fascinelli. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Peter Fascinelli was. Oh, no. Adrian Pastor. Yeah. Adrian Pastor. Thank you. Because um, I don't think he would have given, I'm going to use your word, the gravitas to this role that it needed. Because he was very regal. He was very confident he was not maniacal or megalomaniac necessarily he was doing his his, what he's trying to do here is kind of what zod tried to do in man of steel yes as far as bring the kryptonians back but he said he even said to clark or cal or superman whatever you want to call him never in history have they found a planet that was so compatible 
Mm -hmm. Like, so it's not, it's not like, oh, well, he's doing this just to, just to do it. It's no, this is his chance to bring back his parents, his, you know, his, you know, all of this stuff. Um, and I thought that was really good. I, I think, uh, the, the one thing that, that I didn't like is, is when it came to figuring out how to use the eradicator and Clark went back to the fortress of solitude draw. I was like, Oh no, I mean, Laura is the one who knew that do that. I'm not nearly smart enough. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, you know, how dare you? Right. It's just like, like it it was one of those things where, come on, like it it, it should have been like, I I would have loved it. If he said we were a team on this, that is not my heart stone does not hold that data. It's in her heart stone, right? Which was stolen by Zeta Rowe. That would have. Yeah. But doing that, it took a little bit away from Jor-El and what Jor-El, what we know his history to be. Well, and again, it's just that it's that CW thing where they have to take away the agency of a male character to build up a female character. They do it constantly. They did it to Superman on Supergirl. Yeah, that's what. And yeah. and that it was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, that was the final straw in Supergirl. It was already on thin ice. That's for me. yeah, same. Um, and and you know, for 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 that, it's like, man, you've done so. Todd Helbig, you've done so well to this point that just that one little line and you know it's a nitpick it, yeah. it is it, it it does not take away the fact that I, i'm going to rank this higher than i've ranked any other uh uh soups and lolo show so far but it was just that one moment where it's like come on like yeah come on yeah like be better yeah don't don't give in don't 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 just say things that don't matter when when you have all these characters and, and the fact that like Everything that Edge had set up to that point had helped build up like Laura's expertise. And, you know, at no point have we never thought of her as an equal to Jor El. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And it was, it was her idea to send Tao Ro. It was her idea to send Kal El. Mm-hmm. You know, she's the one who made she's the one who made that decision to give up her sons now, in mm-hmm. this in this instance, um, and, and send them away to to help them. Uh, or to 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 save them, and you know it, it's it's interesting. I do like that he landed on Earth and he was a child, like you know, like an adolescent. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he pulled the little Matrix tube out, and he was like, "Oh, <laughs> like, I like how you, you sent me the message before I had watched it, and you yeah. said something mit- mentioned the bright burn." Dude, he totally had a bright burn moment, and I loved every second of it. I actually went back and watched Bright Burn the other night. Yeah, so. I've been. I have to watch. One of the things I like about. Brightburn, one hundred percent my favorite yeah. Superman movie. <laughs> one thing I like about how they framed the Morgan Edge character, not just in the sense of him being similar to Zod and wanting to mm-hmm. bring his people back, but also seeing why he dis he has such distaste for humanity because yeah. they had him captive for years. Yeah. And did whatever to him. And so that anger and frustration and rage you know, colors how he looks at everyone and, mm-hmm. you know, humanity. And it makes sense. Like you think about, hey, I came to this planet, and, you know, the first thing happens is I get attacked. Then I get experimented upon. You know, these people suck. Right. So, and, and that's the question I do have is what is the attitude of general Kryptonians to humans? Because it, they're in a, in, in, I think for the most part, they didn't know about Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not one of those things where they're they were like, oh, there's this planet out there called Earth with the yellow sun. I mean, Jor El, you know, from from you know previous canon, Jor El found Earth and 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 found that what the yellow sun would do to to Clark or to Cal would make him uh, better, like make him more powerful and, and enhance his already you know, advanced Kryptonian genes. Mm -hmm. Now, not saying that Kryptonians don't have superpowers. They don't fly around, you know, for the most part. Sometimes they do. It just depends on who's writing them. But but Jor-El did the research to find the planet to send them to. Now it looks like Laura has done that. Whatever. That, that, again, one of the parents did it. That's all that matters. Um, Or both. Who who cares? Um, So getting here, I don't, I don't know if, Zeta Rowe and Laura Van Rowe at that point knew what was going to happen to Tao. 
Um, I think, uh, you know, Jorel purposely put Clark in a place because he studied Earth. And, mm -hmm. you know, and even in Smallville, he came to visit Earth and, and visited uh, Jeremiah Kent, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's like, oh, OK, I found I found a family I can trust, uh, which was interesting. Yeah. So the reason I asked that is because um, Eric Val, uh, you know, Sarah's father, yeah. played by Eric, Eric Valdez, Valdez. Yeah. Kyle who, Cushing, who's he's so good as he's come on so well yeah. since the first episode. But just like that type of that ability, not ability, but that, you know, just that rage towards, you mm -hmm. know, everyone that he you know, converses with. Right. It seems like it goes beyond. OK, we need to get rid of Lois for X, Y and Z. It seems like. Right. And I, again, I don't know if that's just the care, the personality of that character or if that was you know just something because we don't we really haven't gotten a lot of kryptonians we've gotten leslie but she's she hasn't really didn't demonstrated that same type of attitude right. necessarily but that that yeah that was just a question i wrote down because i it because the way he played it kyle as you know as kryptonite kyle, krypton kyle or whatever <laughs> He he reminded me a lot of the Viltrumites and how they some of them look at humanity. You know, and I think maybe maybe you know you got to look at it as a case by case basis right. with any person that he felt that way. Maybe that particular Kryptonian was mm -hmm. like, "Here I am. I've been put into this body. I have these powers. I'm superior to you." You know, yeah. Kryptonian supremacy is a thing for sure. Um, you know, the, the, you know they look at it as like, look at what this world, what the what this particular universe galaxy does to us mm -hmm. we're the rightful we're the rightful next step in in the evolution of this planet regardless if we're from here almost or not. superior right well i mean but the you the question i have though is how much phys physiologically do the people who underwent the you know the kryptonian insertion of um you know uh, the the mind whatever mind melding how much of how much does the the human physiology of these people change mm -hmm. because they all fell to earth mm -hmm. um but kryptonite affects them so yeah. you know I, I i think there's a i, I feel like <laughs> i feel like susan lolo has done a good job of kind of like showing us something and going back and telling us like or giving us a, like a bit of an ex explanation because the question you had, like, what happened to all these people when they fell from the sky? Yeah. Which, you know, we'll get to that in a second. And and so I told you I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, this was great. The the whole idea of bringing back not Martha, but Laura. <laughs> yeah. Because um, when, 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 when so they put her in Lana's body, which I imagine had to be kind of weird for Clark. <laughs> Very weird. So, but... uh I think Lana figured out Clark is Superman. I kind of was thinking that I, too. I think she figured it out, and I think it's going to come out at some point later in the season. And because uh, I can't imagine Emmanuel is going to be on the show for the long run. Like maybe I don't know. It just seems I I, I don't want to say she's too big for the show, but I feel like she's she's one of those kind of end like in demand actresses maybe she's not i don't know maybe just i'm a fan so i'm projecting uh but how much of how much of laura is going to stay in in her mm -hmm. you know as well in the same with kyle whichever kryptonian was in him like that that's that's an interesting dynamic because kyle kyle was in a kryptonite cage when it happened yeah um you know he kept Morgan Edge kept Lar far away from the battle as a contingency, which I thought, you know, is great military thinking. So with that, keeping Leslie that far away, would it have mattered? Because, and the reason I asked that is because one of the things even Laura says is that it depends on, like when he asked if it could be reversible, mm -hmm. she said it depends on if, it, if there's a total melt and it could take hours, right? week, or she said days, yeah, weeks, months, or something like that. So is she to that point where she is who she is, like, and the Eradicator wouldn't have done anything? Maybe, but, yeah, maybe. But to your point, I think you still don't want to take that chance as right. Morgan Edge. Especially, yeah, she's your, she's your lieutenant. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, 
who who plays her. I don't have that written down. She's a badass. That character is awesome. Um, I really I really enjoy any time she shows up. And I, and I like how they haven't inundated with us with her. They've given us just like little pieces here well, and there. My favorite thing that they do with her is the super hearing where she eavesdrops on everybody. Mm-hmm. Just that's, I think yeah. that's great. Like she she must have been a spy on Krypton. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway. The, the whole thing this week with the twins and Sarah, I felt like was throwaway, except for John standing up to Sam Lane. Mm-hmm. Like, other than that, I kind of felt like it was too much. I, I think Jordan is going to end up telling Sarah he has powers. I, I put that, like, how long before she, she, she finds that out? And I, I don't think – they haven't shown us anything about Sarah that makes me think that she is mature enough to handle that in any measure of of interesting storytelling other than a CW style like oh they're going to kick off the love triangle with her and John and yeah you know Jordan. yeah and i i do wonder how this will well yeah because i agree with that you know the kid i i just put like in the kids mm-hmm. you know and and it wasn't really it was interesting that it was Jonathan that told her about her father i right. do find that particularly interesting but i really love the scene where you know she talks to kyle Mm -hmm. and then they would leave and kyle's like hey and he's talking to jonathan he's like when i get out of here i'm gonna kill you first right and just that the face jonathan's face is just like oh shit (laughs) so so that was one of the things i liked about that to your point i think it was you know, I I usually like a, like the stuff that happens with the brothers. Yeah, and this is probably out of all ten episodes the weakest entry I, I, or I, one of the weakest. I entries think it for was them. just because I think it was just weak because they really didn't have anything for them. Yeah, and and they that, shoehorned them in the episode, and, and that happens sometimes where you can tell. And that, it would have been it would have been like I think there's things they could have used the screen time with them for mm-hmm. when there had been like you two stay here, like we don't know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm you know, protect each other. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, do, do I need to turn this off? <laughs> that, that, that just really got me that, um, <laughs> I don't even know who that was. Start but, okay. But yeah, I, I think that was kind of like this where the episode slowed down a bit. Yeah. And you know, I, I, you know, here's the thing though, is they could have used it to slow the episode down and, and get it to the point where like the story can go. But, they didn't. They tried to do a whole B plot there. That just yeah. And this week the B plot. I was about to say this was an, an example of an episode that didn't need a B plot. Now, again, saying that I love this episode. I, oh, absolutely. I, I love the Kryptonian lore. I love the little Flashpoint Superman like kind of call out to uh, to Morgan Edge. I liked I liked the moment that Cal had with Laura. And how he called her mother, I thought that was really interesting. To differentiate like, between her yeah. um, and Martha. But then when he said, yeah, I did have another – I had a mother here. Her name was Martha. And I – like, he said it, and I totally went, Martha. Um, <laughs> I, I think a lot of us did. <laughs> Why did you say that name? Because that's the first um, thing that popped up. In absolutely. Head. Like, F you, Zack Snyder. Um, <laughs> Goddamn Zack Snyder. More like Zack Snyder, if you know what I mean, people. Um, <laughs> but anyway – it, it is um they they they've they've handled superman so well and and seeing superman get to talk to you know the heartstone of jor and the mind meld of laura i think in the same episode was really cool and you know i think if you had more time it might have been interesting to ha- to bring her to jor-el and have Jorel and Laura Vanell solve the problem together mm-hmm. because they solve the problem of how to save their son together. And it, to me, that would have been really, really interesting. And to see just kind of that moment of the two of them interacting across time in different levels of corporeal form. Yeah. And, and again, to your point, what you, what you said earlier about how much of, what how much of the kryptonian personality is going to stick yeah i kind of hope some of laura sticks because I, I i think that just is going to add to you know the second half of this season Ugh, only six episodes or the left. second season or the or, or the second season 
and and not just personality will they retain some portion of their abilities yeah, powers whatever. like is it is it something that you know over time over the next few weeks it you know they kind of bleeds out and are we gonna name smallville new candor or something like that <laughs> did you were you surprised at how many had been changed yes i thought that was really cool i and thought I, it was gonna be like five or six i loved how they were triggered and like just took off like they stopped what they were doing and then they were off to go ruin superman yeah day. i was extremely surprised there were that many so it was cool though. Yeah. And the scene, and now the CG wasn't great here, but like so. Okay, hold on. Let me get. Let me let me back up. So Clark takes the Eradicator, and he he figures out that it needs a tremendous amount of power, as much power as the sun. Um, and obviously there's nothing like that on Earth except for him. And mm-hmm. so he's like, I'll just dump everything I have into it, and he does that and more. The way he uses it, which I thought was really cool. But so as he's flying away, pulling the Kryptonians in, or the well, the, the small Vonians, <laughs> small Tonians in, um, to 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 you know kind of let off this trap. Um, I love the the just how he's on the like if you're looking at your TV, he's on on the left side of your screen, and they're filling up most of the right side, and you see their heads, and then their eyes all turn on at the same time with yeah. the red. I thought that was really cool. It wasn't the best CG. No. But it was still a really cool visual. And my absolute favorite part of this is it showed how calculating Morgan Edge Talro is. He realized what was happening and backed off. Yeah. Like and and so I'm wondering is is Morgan Edge was Morgan Edge a person and then Talro didn't actually escape and his consciousness was maybe put into Morgan edge. Hmm. I didn't think about that. So that's, that's kind of where it's like, he, he, he knows what's about to happen and he doesn't trust the bond maybe. Mm -hmm. And that, and that, again, that goes to the point. I, I, I will say, I do think it is him. I think it is Tauro, but that, that still adds to the fact of why he kept Leslie away. Right. Because even if it, even though Laura said there is a, time where you know that bond is permanent who knows right so you know just a thought i mean it's just a thought i had yeah, as, as that's I was actually very it. interesting but i i thought i just thought it was such a cool scene and uh and then you know the 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 wave goes out it turns everybody off and all these people are a mile up in the sky yeah like I, like I said to you, like maybe Clark like used like what was la- left of his power to save them, which is why he couldn't make it into the fortress, and he passed out in the the worst looking snow I've ever seen yeah. on TV. Um, it was like gravel. Like I was <laughs> like, did a nuclear winter happen? And like, because that looks like ash. Yeah, uh, ash a s h, not ass a s s. Um, <laughs> but uh, I thought that was cool. I thought the special effect was awesome. I love when he's like you know. The way he he was able to avoid the 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 heat vision, mm-hmm. it was beautiful. Like just it, it, that was so beautifully done in flight. Um, the only other time I've really really thought they nailed Superman's flight was in two times in Superman Returns, when he's coming down to stop the seven forty seven to crash in, into the baseball stadium, mm-hmm. and that bit of the wing breaks off, and he does that like roll. But like he still has to come back, like he kind of has to open up to to slow down, and then dives right back into it, is one. And then the other part was when he was flying through Metropolis to get to the new island, Kryptonite Island that uh, Lex Luthor had just been, and things are falling apart and like things are falling down, and he's flying in this bit of glass, like massive, like the, all the windows in this building break, and the glass is coming down, and he rolls over and he just melts everything with his heat vision doesn't stop at all and then just turns back over and keeps going once he saved everybody those up until this point those were like my two favorite like flying moments for superman and i love this i love the way he like just flew it was Mm -hmm. beautiful and i i thought that was really cool and then how he he turns the eradicator and uses their power as well to amplify it even more just super smart yeah it's again I, i just love this show and this episode, I don't know if it was my favorite because it just seems like every 
it, it, it does like every week, it seems like. It builds on top of what we've been given. So It's great storytelling. Yes. It, it, and it, that's how storytelling should I'm be. I'm shocked yeah. that this show is on the CW. 100%. Because, again, we know what CW shows do. Even the ones I've, we've liked. Yeah. So, and again, we've, you know, going through this, we've had issues with this episode, but they're like smaller issues, again. Yeah. And some nitpicks here and there. Sure. I mean, there's nitpicks in this episode. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But so, but looking at looking at what this show has done, and like taking a look at what Loki does, for example, right? The show ended. We're is it Wednesday yet? Mm-hmm. Because you know we can't watch on Tuesday because we watch on the app. But is it Wednesday yet? I don't have that same feeling. Is it Wednesday yet for Loki? No. I actually have the all right. Just show me what. Just just get it over with. Like with Loki, it, it's kind of like. It's six episodes. Just drop it all. Just mm-hmm. drop the rest of it. Um, but I mean, they're not going to, which is fine. But they need to re. They need to get TV people involved with Loki and not movie people, mm-hmm. because or with I'm sorry, with with just the Disney Plus stuff in general, because Wandavision wasn't like that for the first three episodes. Episode four hits, and then it was an MCU movie. Uh, Virtue Signal and the the Neutered Soldier was just a long movie. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. There was no big cliffhanger for anything. And Loki doesn't have any cliffhangers. He walks through a door. Like, okay. Like, show me show me something that's happening in the multiverse, not just a line going all squiggly. Yeah. Take, take stock in what they did. One of the, what, a show that had some of the best cliffhangers from a week-to-week basis was The Expanse. I mean... Lost. Just tremendous. Yeah. yeah. And... Th- this show is, you can tell it's, you know, well, it's just the budget, but also. Hold on, let's go back a little further. Mm-hmm. Buffy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Buffy had great cliffhangers, but they didn't have a cliffhanger every week. That was the beauty and of it. And you don't need, yes. Because Buffy started off as a procedural, plain and simple. It was kill the monster of the week, and then season two, it turned into that larger story with, um, you know, Angelus and, and all of that. And, and but you were like so tied into it, but you would go like two or three weeks without seeing David Boreanaz in that mm-hmm. season. Yeah, you went multiple weeks without seeing Spike and Drusilla, and then even if you did, they they kind of like doled them out in in measure until it was time for that to be the story. Superman has done that. Mm-hmm. Loki does not. Falcon and Winter Soldier did not. Wandavision. Did, did sometimes, sometimes until it got to the point yeah. where they decided they didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. So out of uh, out of five moms in your girlfriend's body, what do you give this? <laughs> I, I, okay, that's a good one. I give it a four point five. I really love the backstory we get from Morgan and mm-hmm. Tauro. Yep. It it really gives us puts us in perspective of what he wants he's not in it's not just some two-bit villain he has a purpose and again agree or not when you have a villain that has a purpose it makes them all the more interesting a purpose they believe in not just i want all the money and not just i want all the power right but i'm doing this for a true purpose so again and i have a lot of questions as far as not not like what the people that were um you know, I, I was about to say possessed. Where, where are they at in, in, in this? You know, are right. they? And what happens to Clark? Because again, he's powered down. He's in the middle of nowhere. You know, you know, I mean, he's trying to drag himself into the fortress and didn't make it. And didn't make it. Like, so it's so interesting. And so this this uh, the on on Wikipedia the the summary says elsewhere. Uh, so hold on. Uh, Superman lands close to the fortress before passing out. Now drained of his powers. Elsewhere, Edge and Lar are in a canyon preparing their next move. They're at the base of the... See, you said that to me, too, and there's no snow, though. There is. It's up on top. And, but like, if that's in... Now, so I, where, you know, I mean, they're, are, in, they're shooting in Vancouver. So, okay, like, so my know. question was, are we saying... like, Because his he's always had it in the Arctic. Yeah. If that's the Arctic... I mean, it's still... So I get it. And again, I, it, But, like, I, I feel... Like, it just seems like they knew what he was going to do. Yeah. And, and because Laura has been listening to him the whole time, mm-hmm. like, and that's true. It. So, and that's the question I had because I couldn't tell because it was pretty dark mm-hmm. and I, I, I never went back to see it. And maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Like, but, but cause I asked you, I was like, 
he was very confident despite losing all his people. And that was that's one of the things like why is Tauro so confident? It could be because he's they're gonna they're at the base because of the they're gonna like okay, okay we'll, gonna be like, all right, we'll take, take this, this. <laughs> or it's something else or both. You know who knows? Yeah. But so that was one of the big questions I, mean, I had. How great would it be if they're there next week? Picks up, he takes the the Eradicator back and then goes and takes jor Hearthstone. Mm-hmm. Like now he's got both. And the Eradicator, and he can, you know, it opens it up for for the last four episodes, four or five episodes of the season, just to be balls to the wall, awesome. Yeah. So. Oh, so would you give it? Uh I'm f- uh, four, four and a half. Okay, four and a half out of ten. Uh, I, I would have gone. I would have given it an extra, you know, point two five if they would have done less with the the twins and Sarah this week. Yeah. And I'm not bashing twin the twins and Sarah because the twins have been one of my favorite things about oh, the show. Oh, absolutely. And I think yeah. Sarah has been a very interesting character. Like there's nothing there's nothing wrong with any of that. It's just this week could have used my favorite word, a little restraint with with the B the B story and just mm-hmm. really focused in because as much as last week felt like a mid-season finale, this week felt like a mid-season premiere. Mm-hmm. And you know, you just kind of get it out there, and you set up the rest of the story. And and you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't know. There wasn't, there were no clues or hints given if if Kyle retained any of the Kryptonian um, bad guyness. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I kind of hope he does because he's just, I think he's fantastic in that in yeah. that role. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, so that's the episode this week. Thank you guys for listening. Any last words? Nope. I just is it Wednesday yet? Is it Wednesday yet? <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. See ya.